those guys over there? You see them? One of them's gonna be dinner. That's right, steak episode today. We're outside, gonna be steak on the grill. It's gonna be fantastic. We're gonna start cooking for the summer. And first we gotta go get some dinner. So, haha, <laughs> let's go get one of those steaks. Come on, Michael, let's go. <sighs> oh boy, those guys were harder to catch than I thought they'd be. Ah, oh, but I won. And here we go, kids. New York strip steaks. Oh, these are gonna be fantastic. It was worth the work. Ah. Oh. All right, oh. gang, it's summer. It's time to cook on the grill, right? That's what everybody's doing. That's what I see everybody else doing on all the other cooking shows. So I guess I gotta follow in line. I guess we gotta cook out on the grill too. So we're gonna make some New York strip steaks. They're gonna be fantastic. I gave them a little bit of a quick dry age in my fridge just for the day. The way you do that's real simple. You take your steaks, you get them defrosted, you wrap them up in a paper towel, put them in the refrigerator on the bottom shelf in a drip proof container. You leave them in there wrapped up without a cover on them. You don't cover them and it'll dry age. If you really want to get a good dry age, you can do that for like three days in a row. Same steak, just every day you want to change the paper towel and put a fresh one on. Then they'll come out and they'll be beautifully dry aged. You want dry aged steaks. When you go to the restaurants, when you go to the steakhouses, that's what they have. They have dry aged steak. That's why it tastes so good and so rich and full of flavor. These I just gave a quick dry age just for today. They'll still get a little bit of that flavor into it and it's going to be fantastic. What we also have, let's take a look here. We're cooking on the grill, we got asparagus. I have asparagus that I broke off the ends because the ends are woody and don't taste good. They're not snacky. You don't want them. I just kept the tips. So I broke those off. You can feel they'll break naturally. Where they naturally snap is where you want to snap them off. Then I took them and I tossed them in a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper. We're going to cook these guys on the grill. What else do we got? What else do we got? We have here potato wedges. Okay. We're going to cook these on the grill too. I took these potatoes and I baked it in the oven for 45 minutes at 400 degrees. Washed it first because we want to keep the skin. Then we're going to take these guys and we're going to brush those also with oil and salt and pepper, a little bit of tarragon. The tarragon is going to give a nice herby and sweet note to it. It's really great with potatoes. We're going to cook those on the grill too. We part cooked them in the oven and that's why they're mostly done and we just want to finish them on the grill. You don't want to try and take raw potatoes and cook them on the grill. They're going to burn before the inside gets cooked. So those, once again, 400 degrees, 45 minutes, take it out, let it cool, cut it down into wedges. So we're going to do that with our steaks, have a nice outside grilled meal. Right now the grill is warming up, so while we're doing that, let's get some of our other prep work done, right? Let's, let's start on these potatoes. I want to do the potatoes first for a couple of reasons. I want to do them first because I want to have them ready, because again, mise en place, everything has to be ready and in its place. I also want to do them first because you know what? We talk about safety and sanitation on this show, right? I only have one brush here. I only have one brush to brush oil with. And I'm going to be brushing the steaks with these. I have not yet. Right now the brush is clean. I don't want to touch raw meat with this and then touch the potatoes. That's cross-contamination. That spreads bacteria. We don't want that. Bacteria is not snacky. Unless you find the idea of a snacky evening is to spend the rest of the next three days in your bathroom praying to the porcelain gods. I'm not into that. So we're going to brush the potatoes with this first, then we can use it on the steak. Because potato going to steak isn't going to spread disease. Raw steak going to potato will. So let's brush these potatoes. We have our olive oil here. A little squeeze bottle action. Sorry, I don't have my counter. I'm outside. A little squeeze bottle action here. Get those going, right? All right, and we're going to brush that on. Now we're going to flip them and make sure that the oil spreads around. We don't want them drenched in oil, but we do need them oiled because it adds flavor and because this way the potatoes won't stick to the grill. Let's get a little more oil here because we didn't get the bottom ones. Fantastic. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Move these around. We kept the skin on because the skin has a lot of flavor. It also is where all the vitamins and nutrients are. Once again, you know that I'm the snack master. I don't worry about health that much. But if I'm going to eat some food, I'm not trying to make it unhealthy on purpose. 
And while I'm doing this, it looks like our grill is starting to heat up, which is fantastic. I see some smoke coming off. So we're getting in business here. Now we just want to season them. I had to bring everything from my house so it's wrapped up. This isn't my house, this is my mom's house. Why is it at my mom's house? Because my apartment complex recently outlawed grills. So I don't have my grill at home anymore. I have to come grill at mom's. That's okay, I'll give mom a steak too. So put this down, now we have, so put that down, now we have our uh, salt. I'm gonna hit these with a little bit of salt. I'm not gonna kill them because we want to taste the potatoes. But like I told you before, you gotta salt everything because it just brings out the flavor of the food. So those are seasoned. What else? This one I have to do on the prep table, sorry, because I can't squeeze the pepper grinder with two hands. Taking it easy with the pepper because you know what? I'm cooking for family today, like I said. My mom and my uncle, they're old. They want bland food. They don't like a lot of pepper. So that's okay. You cook for the people you're cooking for. When I get older, I probably won't like my food as strong as I do now either. So just a tiny bit of pepper on those. Last thing on the potatoes, a little bit of tarragon. Uh, I love the smell of tarragon. It's a fantastic herb, really beautiful. But now, steak is about to be our next victim. The grill is hot. Turn that guy down a little bit there because we don't want flare ups. It's time to hit the steaks. We'll get rid of that there. And once again, like I said, we're going to hit this with some olive oil. You see, some people oil their grills before they cook. I don't oil the grill, I oil the food. It's the food that I don't want to stick. I'm not trying to make the grill not stick to anything. So, we're gonna hit these with some olive oil right there. And again, we have our brush. Just brush the olive oil on. That's it. You don't have to dredge them in oil, but you wanna make sure they don't stick. That's really the purpose. Plus the olive oil we use, because olive oil adds flavor. So we got that, we're good. Now, once again, kosher salt. Do it from up high, sprinkle it on. We do it from up high. It spreads itself around, especially since it's a little bit windy out here today. The wind is helping me to season my food. That's it. You want a lot of salt. It seems like I'm putting a lot on, but you know what? It's a thick piece of meat, and you want the salt to go into the food and actually season all the way through. So you need a good amount. Now, pepper. And once again, we're gonna take it easy with the pepper because we got the family. So here we go. Now the wind isn't being so cooperative with the pepper. <laughs> That's okay. That's it for the pepper. I think we're in good shape here. Let's get these steaks on the grill. You want to put them on with the oil to side down first, obviously. You want to put them at an angle. Why do you want to put them at an angle? Because in a few minutes, we're going to turn them. When we turn them, we're going to get those nice cross hatch X marks that we love on steak that everybody loves to have. So, let's get these guys moving. There we go. Steak on the grill. Sizzling sounds nice. Before I forget, I'm gonna hit the other side with olive oil. Give him another brush. So when I turn them, they're already ready to go and not gonna stick on the other side either. We don't want sticking. 
Okay, that's all set. While we do that, what I want to do next, once again, season. So you notice that I took it easy with the pepper. The reason why I did that is one of the snack master's philosophies is, hey, you gotta like your food. You're the one eating it. I'm making food for people who don't like pepper. So I left the pepper off. You gotta be willing to compromise with the people that you're cooking for, because they might always not like everything that you like. But that's okay. They're gonna like these. While those are on there, I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, asparagus on the grill. Let's dump that on. Fantastic. We're gonna spread these asparagus around so they can all get a little bit of uh, time on the grill. That's important, obviously. They all gotta get some fire or they're not gonna cook. So we got that going. And uh, some of these steaks are gonna come off pretty quick here because my mom and my uncle, they like their steaks closer to rare. Me, I'm more of medium rare to a little bit medium kind of guy. Michael, at least medium. You know, the kids, they don't go crazy with the uh, undercooked steaks. So, let's take a look. Do we have marks yet? Not just yet. So we want to give that just a little bit more time, but not much, because we don't want to overcook them. In the meantime, we want to be ready. We want to be prepared here with foil, because these steaks, when they come off, you gotta rest them. So you put them on a plate, you let them rest. That's what you wanna do with steak. Don't cut into it until it's rested. You gotta put all the juices onto your plate, onto your cutting board, and they're not gonna be in the food. You gotta give a steak five to 10 minutes after it comes off the grill, and that's true of any meat. You gotta let meat rest. The juices are all pushing to the outside right now because of the heat. If they push to the outside and you cut, they stay outside. So we're taking care to see that these don't do that, that they end up nice and juicy. We're gonna let them rest. All right, what I was just doing there was moving them because you see I have a hot part of my grill and I have a less hot part of my grill. And since my family doesn't want my steaks as well as I do, I move their steaks to the less hot part of the grill and my steak to the hotter spot. These asparagus are doing their thing. And while the steaks are resting, that's when I'm gonna throw the potatoes on the grill because right now I have a small grill, I don't have room. So. So I have to prioritize, but that's okay. I'll prioritize. While the steaks are resting, I'll cook the potatoes. Works out very well. Another important thing about steak, you don't want to poke it. You notice I'm using tongs, not a fork when I flip this. You don't want to poke your steak. All the juices are gonna run out into your grill. It's gonna be two problems. First of all, they won't be juicy because all the juice ran out. Second of all, the juice is gonna cause flare-ups and you're gonna burn the outside of the steak before the inside is cooked. So what do you want to do? You have to learn a little technique here. You have to learn how to feel a steak's done this with your finger. How do you do that? You take your hand, open like this, you feel inside here, it feels kind of soft, that's rare. Close your first finger. It feels a little bit tougher, that's medium rare. Close the middle finger to your thumb. A little bit tougher, that's medium. Third finger to the thumb, that's medium well. Pinky to the thumb, that's well done. We don't want to hear about well done because well done is shoe leather. If you like your steaks well done, I'm sorry, you like shoe leather. Give these steaks a turn. Oh, they're coming out very, very nice here.
mom and the uncle, the steaks are done already because again, they like them less cooked. That didn't take very long at all, did it, kids? You take them, you wrap them, let them rest. I want to move this stuff because I'm getting some flare ups here, and I don't want flare ups. These flare ups burn your food. Asparagus are doing their thing. Now that I have some room, now that I have some room, potato time. One. Well, I'm not going to count them. I don't think you need to give me count potatoes. That's not very entertaining. And these again are basically cooked. I'm just trying to get grill marks on them, so they're really only going to take a couple of minutes. They're going to cook very quickly. Those are good. Pretty much as soon as they get grill marks, they're finished. Another piece of foil for the other two steaks, which are also about to come off. I like my steak a little more done than my mom and my uncle, but I don't like it well either. They're about ready. Oh yeah, those feel perfect. Let's get them all. Once again, the steaks are going to rest while I finish up the rest of the food. Hey, I like these kind of episodes. Look how fast it goes. Oh, see that? Can you see it? That's what we're looking for right there. Beautiful grill marks. This potato's about done already. I'm going to turn them, get the same grill marks for the other side, and they're going to be ready to go in no time. If a couple of them break up on you, it's okay. This is grill food, it's rustic. It's not going to hurt anything. This isn't going on a plate in a five-star restaurant. This is grill. This is barbecue. This is outside. So those are going to be fun. All right, I'm going to try one of these asparagus now. I'm going to see if they're done. Perfect. Oh my God, that's great. <laughs> All right, these asparagus are ready to come off. Grab them carefully so you don't lose them all in the grill. You also can do this sort of thing with a grill basket if you have one or want to get one. It's a good sound grilling investment. Those are done. They're beautiful. Next we want to get our potatoes off because they're done too. We don't want to burn. Like I said, they're already cooked. Beautiful, nicely brown, nicely grill marked, grilled potatoes. Put a couple of these on each plate. You're ready to go. About two or three wedges per plate. A beautiful accompaniment for the steak, for the asparagus. Very nice. And right here, kids, so you have a beautiful grilled meal. Nice skirt steak with nice color, beautiful asparagus, nice potatoes grilled with the grill marks. Take some chives, lay it across the top like that for color, and you're in business. That's grilling for today, kids. So join us next time on Cooking with the Snagmaster. Enjoy your steak.